have become a state of Quran. There's no light. There's no diesel. You and I know now. It's nothing is working in this country as it is now. <laughs> Killing and insecurity, injustice everywhere. We are not ready to continue suffering. We need a new nation. We are talking about the new Nigeria. How well do you know you? No, this is. Yes, have covers. Yes, What do you know? Who is obedient? I will vote for my Yoruba person. As the 2023 general elections draws near, a massive movement is starting to take shape. Some have even referred to this movement as NSAS 2.0. For those of you who aren't familiar with NSAS, it was a decentralized social movement that brought Nigeria to a standstill for weeks. NSAS started off as a protest to end police brutality in Nigeria, but quickly metamorphosed into a protest to end bad governance, which has kept Nigeria economically stagnant for decades. The NSAR social movement was led by young Nigerians between the ages of 18 to 35. The movement posed a serious threat to the incumbent government and its allies, which are made up of a much older generation. To put it into context, the age gap between the electorate and those in government. The incumbent president, Mohamed Buhari, was 76 at the time while the youngest minister in his cabinet, Sadia Omar Farouk, was 46 as of October 2020. No one within the age group of the protesting youth was in a significant position of power. The youth were agitated as they felt the government wasn't a reflection of them in any form. While their protest to end bad governance was raging on, the government did the unthinkable. On the 20th of October 2020, Protesting youths were seated at the Lekki toll gate in Lagos and the Nigerian military on the orders of the president opened fire, killing dozens of harmless protesters and carted away with their dead bodies. These abruptly halted the movement in its tracks as the youth at the time weren't ready for violence. They showcase us as though we are the ones portraying the violence. Please, you can look at every, each one person here. Our intentions are pure. Fast forward to 2022, a new social movement called the obedient and now clamoring for the same thing the NSAS protesters wanted, an end to bad governance. They want a youthful, educated, exposed and competent leader who is a reflection of who they are as the president in the forthcoming 2023 general elections. The difference between these protesters and the former is they are willing to evoke violence if necessary. They have proven on social media that they are willing to tear down, shake down, bring down anything or anyone that steps in their path to achieve their mission. When you are tired of something, you have to you have to be aggressive over it. Seeing how this country is, this administration, everything just went down. Like all sectors of this country just went down. I just feel the the situation of the country is enough to make somebody want to be aggressive. Though I'm not supporting such um, such character, but I, I feel. Nigerian youths are awakened. They have woken up and I feel they are ready to to just take what rightly belongs to them. The people are choking and people are simply gasping for breath. And because people are gasping for breath, there's a tendency that for people now to begin to wake up to reality. A loaf of bread that used to go for 200 naira before, under corruption, when PDP was in power, is now 800 naira. So you can see, look at Bag of rice was 8,000 under corruption. Bag of rice is now 36,000. So you don't, you don't need to preach to a blind man that it is, it is raining. He can actually feel the driplets on his body, you know? So for me, I believe that these and several other factors are the reason why people are becoming politically conscious and aware. Again, the insecurity that is plaguing the country, the divisions in the country, tribal, ethnic, and religious, which is one of the things I'm extremely afraid of. We cannot continue like this. Nigeria is in trouble. We are in their need of redemption. That's the truth of the matter. Let, 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 let us deceive ourselves in this country. We are in trouble. Every day, there is a, there is, there is, there is a breaking news of one destruction here, one kidnap here, everywhere. Nobody is safe. We, we, we are in this country, and inmates were released from the uh, Kujia Correctional Facility into the, the, into the uh, Federal Capital Territory and then 
people are behaving as if all is well. My brother, all is not well. It's the truth of the matter. I'm hoping that as Nigerians and as youths in Nigeria, we'll be able to show these people that we can take back the ballot power and that voting really counts and it really matters. Obedient is a word play of the surname of Labour Party's presidential candidate, Peter Gregory Obi. The obedient are fierce, die-hard supporters of his who believe he is best suited to save Nigeria from the ruins of the present and past administrations. Uh, obedient is a, is, a, is a word a coined from the word obi, but added the dient to make it sound more a kind of uh, loquacious. Obedient means that we are looking forward to good governance in Nigeria. Obi is obedient. Being loyal, if I can say, to Peter Obi's cause and views and vision. If you're talking the most credible person among them who has, who can really, uh, who can lead the country, is Labour Party. Two people have been in, in, in the system since 1999 and they couldn't change anything. So we'll vote wisely this time around. This is now that Palita. We know what's happening. It's very difficult getting fuel and buying fuel for 3,000 era for black market. We are looking for people who have the capacity to do things, to build the change that we want. And yes, that's why we're supporting Peter Obi. I'll give it to Peter Obi because the both PDP and the uh, APC. Uh, we have tried both of them. I'm very optimistic. Obi has no structure. He has stru we are the structure. Hungry Nigerians are the structure. Unemployed youths are the structure. All these uh, undergraduate that are out of school are the structure. We are the structure. We, we can't continue like this unless they want something else. But to me, PFC revolution is the answer. He recently picked his vice presidential running mate, Yusuf Ahmed Dati, an economist and school proprietor. Their supporters believe these two will bring about the desired change to Nigeria. People are tired of the present structure of the Nigerian state. Hence, they are, they are seeking for alternative. And what uh, former Governor Peter B has done for the Nigerian people is to provide that alternative, is to provide that new face, is to provide, is to provide that new idea, that fresh idea. And if you look at his pedigree as a person, you will know he's a man of conviction. You will know he's a man of principle. You will know he's a man that is clear on what he wants to bring to the table. And for me, I feel if they are given an opportunity, they will definitely do a lot of things. A lot of developments will come, definitely. I believe so much in Peter Obi. I believe in his vision, moving our economy from consumption to production. I covered business for almost a year and I, I knew what I saw as a journalist. If Peter Obi succeeds in moving us from consumption to production, it's going to touch every facet of the, of the country, like every sector will definitely... If a country is a production country, definitely you're creating jobs. When you're creating jobs, people get money, education, you're able to send your, your children or, or your, your dependents to school, like what we're experiencing with us, you know, a lot of people are suffering, people have lost their jobs. If some people had the means, of course, they would have sent their children out to study. The idea, the vision of moving us from a consumption economy to a production economy, and I know it's possible because we've seen what he has done in a number of states. He has done a lot. In fact, all Peter of these boxes are checked. Nobody can say anything bad about him. So I, I, I just believe in him and, and that's why I'm doing this. We are looking for people who have the capacity to do things, to build the change that we want. And yes, that's why we are supporting Peter Obi. While the obedient movement gains momentum across the nation, there are some skeptics that don't believe change can ever occur in Nigeria. They simply believe Peter Obi and the Labour Party do not have enough reach across all 36 states of the country to win the presidential elections. Peter didn't do very well in Anambra, truth be said. You know, what did he do in Anambra? Bad roads, no hospitals, no schools. Can, if Peter is sick today, can he go to any hospital in Anambra? You understand? He can't. That's the truth. You know, if his children are sick or his wife is sick, can he go to any hospital in Anambra? Why didn't his children attend schools in Anambra? You understand? Why are his students, why did his children go to school abroad? You know, so. Forget about the razzmatazz and the emotion of politics. I come on, I like the idea. He's coming to cut costs. He's coming to translate Nigeria from consumption to production. Of course, that's what we need. He seems to have the right idea, but I think he will do better in the economy. You understand? If he doesn't get to be president, you know, he can be either uh, something in the economy, 
uh, anyway, he went to was it Egypt or somewhere recently to go and learn about power. Okay, let's give him Ministry of Power. Fashola made so much noise about bringing power to Nigeria seven, eight years ago. They put him there. Complete failure, a disaster. So I'm not particularly excited about politicians and their many promises and sweet talks. You know, I like some of their ideas, you know, but that does not mean I'm carried away in any way by them. I have zero, almost zero confidence in politicians generally. I don't think that the, the president, irrespective of who the president is, and the vice president, irrespective of how competent the officer, how, you know, their character and other sort of things, has the capacity to turn around this country. I think Nigeria needs a critical mass of people in the right places to make that change happen. I think if there's anything we should have learned by now, which is that the character and the person of the president and vice president can only go so far. Ultimately, the change that this country needs has to be mass change at the highest level beyond the person of the president and the vice president. So we've seen excitement before, we've seen expectation before. What we have not seen is the translation of that excitement and those expectations to good leadership. And that's why I said earlier that we need more than the president and the vice president to be good people or competent people to make the change that needs to happen in Nigeria happen. There is also the role of tribe and religion, which always comes to play in Nigerian politics. Recently, the All Progressives Congress candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu picked a fellow Muslim as his running mate. This is out of the norm for Nigerian politics. There has always been a balance of Muslim and Christian joint tickets across the Federation. So, the question bags, are things changing? This is a multi-religious country. And because we're a multi-religious country, he ought to have put in, into consideration, again, considering the fact that the current government and the current president has extremely divided Nigerians along tribal and ethnic lines. The president should ordinarily, uh, the presidential candidate of APC should ordinarily have put into put that into consideration and made sure that in arriving at a decision, a final decision on this subject matter, that he had, you know, uh, balanced the ticket. But he, he has failed to balance the ticket. Even chapter two of our constitution talks about national integrity, unity. That's the whole essence of. Our, our existence as a country. So if we jettison that, you know, because all they are thinking about is just how to win. It, it, they, what that church was saying is that Tinubu is not Muslim enough. You know, and as such, they needed a northern Muslim that is generally accepted to the north so that they can secure votes in that part of the country. And I think it is wrong because even if they succeed to win the election, then they will now be battling to govern the country. Or unite the country. What do you mean you'll be your there? Which who is your business? I will vote for my Yoruba person. The man is capable to do it. It's an economist and the man is half interest of this country hand. And I am sure that the man can do it. The issue of religion, ethnicity and tribalism has kept into play in politics. Virtually both the Christians and the Muslims they are up and doing. Virtually if you look at how even the churches came out and uh, encouraged their member to get their PVC. Some who are, don't have anything to add into Nigerian politics, they went into religion and hide under religion for them to achieve their aims. So virtually, every Nigerian, whether you are a Muslim or whether you are a Christian, you must know where you are voting. Now, we are voting based on faith, not longer based on some personality. We should forget about the personality. The issue now is we have drawn the line. The line has been drawn between the Muslim and the Christian to see who can rule. Nigeria is divided as it stands today along religious, along ethnic lines. Let's not deceive ourselves. It's the truth. For, and we have never been this divided. And for the ruling party to, to give a Muslim Muslim ticket because of political correctness, that's the reason. It's political correctness because there's, there's an impression that if they give a northern Christians, he will not get the support of his people. But that is insensitive because they are making the northern people look as if they cannot make informed and intellectual decisions. That is insensitive. Even the APC in 2015, there were speculations that the, that the then General Muhammad Buhari, the candidate of the APC, would pick a Muslim, a Muslim candidate. But the, but the man said no. For the purpose of justice, for the purpose of fairness, for the purpose of inclusiveness, 
Let them let him look get a Christian. Can a, a Christian run a mill? Hence the emergence of Vice President Yemi Usipanjo. So between that time and now, what has changed? We are we are we are we have even we have even divided them all. So for the ruling party to do that, for me I just feel they just want you to they just want to fulfill political correctness. And it is insensitive sincerely. As we draw near to the 2023 general elections, the obedient movement is one to watch out for. Subscribe to TOS TV Network to follow this series and more.